This is Thorny Island, on the south coast of England, the site of a series of trials organised by the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. The trials examine the behaviour of gas clouds, which are heavier than air. Information on the behaviour of flammable or toxic gas clouds in the atmosphere is needed so that the possible hazard of large-scale industrial accidents can be assessed. HSE brought together a consortium of 36 organisations from 10 different countries to finance the trials. NMI, the National Maritime Institute, was the principal contractor. Planning of the trials has taken three years and was guided by the results of earlier, smaller scale trials carried out for the Health and Safety Executive by the Chemical Defence Establishment. This site was chosen partly because of its remoteness from centres of population and partly because it's well suited to the nature of the trials. The island was formerly an airfield and therefore is a flat, clear area with a run-up distance of one kilometre over uniform, unobstructed ground. Parts of the runways over which the gas cloud may travel have been painted white so that their surface temperatures match that of the surrounding area. The large white tent near the intersection of the runways is the source of the gas cloud. An extensive array of instruments is mounted on fixed masts erected in the expected path of the cloud. 45 masts support over 200 instruments, sensing gas concentration and turbulence as well as a variety of environmental parameters required to describe the prevailing atmospheric conditions. The positioning and alignment of the mast array was guided by estimates of cloud behaviour prepared before the start of practical work on the site. The gas container is situated near the apex of the array with some masts upwind and some to the side. This is because a heavy gas cloud can move against the wind as well as spreading out sideways. 150 metres upwind of the gas container, this weather mast has instruments to measure the properties of the wind up to a height of 30 metres. Sonic anemometers measure rapid fluctuations in wind velocity along three different axes. Shielded thermometers measure the ambient temperature and a solar emitter records the incoming solar radiation. This instrument measures relative humidity in the atmosphere and cup anemometers monitor wind speed. Inside this mobile laboratory is a LIDAR instrument. LIDAR is an optical form of radar and uses a ruby laser as its energy source. A pulse of radiation is fired in the direction of the gas cloud. Some is scattered back by the smoke in the cloud. The amount that is scattered back depends on the concentration of smoke and so of gas. The LIDAR is able to measure the concentration over a small part of the cloud from a remote position and can be scanned across the cloud to get the distribution of concentration. As the site was formerly an airfield, weather information going back over many years has been available in planning the trials. It's essential to know in advance when suitable weather conditions are approaching, so weather forecasts for the area are obtained from the local meteorological office. The gases which will form the cloud are nitrogen and dichlorodifluoromethane, a commonly used refrigerant gas. They're stored in liquefied form in these tanks. The liquefied gases are evaporated in heaters, then mixed together in the required ratio and piped to the gas container. The initial density of the cloud can be varied up to 4.2 times the density of air. The gas container, which is supported by rigging, is 14 meters diameter and 13 meters high and made of plastic sheet. This is what happens in the experiment. When the tent collapses, a preformed cloud of heavier than air gas at ambient pressure and temperature is suddenly released. Orange smoke is mixed with the cloud to make it visible. Because the gas is heavy, it spreads out sideways, especially when the wind speed is low.
To measure and record the behavior of the cloud, a lot of instrumentation is required. These gas sensors were specially developed for the trials by HSE. There are four of them on each mast, up to a maximum height of 14.5 meters. They measure the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere. The reduction in this concentration below the normal level provides an indication of the concentration of the released gas. Inside the cylindrical part of the sensor, there's an electrochemical cell which responds to oxygen. Here's the sensing electrode. It's made of this material, a thin porous layer of silver evaporated onto PTFE, which is gas permeable but non-porous. The dialysis membrane here acts as an ionic conductor to the sodium chloride and silver wire in the reservoir behind. The voltage output from the cell is processed in an electronic circuit. A sleeving provides thermal insulation to stabilize the temperature in the cell. Standard gas sensors have a response time of better than one second and will measure concentrations of released gas down to 0.1%. 180 of them are deployed in the possible path of the gas cloud. Rapid fluctuations in concentration due to turbulence in the cloud are detected by fast response sensors. This is a modified version of the standard gas sensor. Its frequency response has been enhanced by modifying both the construction of the cell and the circuit that processes the signal. Another type is based on a light scattering principle. Light emitted from this side is reflected by the cloud to this side. If there's no smoke, the beam is not reflected. But in smoke, the beam striking here is reflected to the receptor. NMI installed the equipment and conducted the trials under the direction of HSE. The signals from the various sensors are channeled through these data loggers. There are 34 of them spread around the site at points convenient to the masts. Each data logger can accept signals from up to eight sensors. They first convert the sensor signals from analog to digital form and then transmit the signals through cables to the control tower. Each instrument is allocated an address code and with so many instruments in use, the task of reading and recording their output must be computerized. The computer is programmed to interrogate every instrument in a specified order and it does this 20 times every second. A trial is about to start. A detailed countdown procedure is programmed into the computer and each step must be performed when called up by the computer. The container is erected and filled with gas. In this trial, the gases will be mixed to a density 1.7 times that of air. Meanwhile, cameras are attached to the helicopter to provide aerial photographs of the progress of the gas cloud. The helicopter will hover directly over the cloud throughout the trial. Final checks are being made on the quantity and composition of gas in the container. The computer has started to interrogate the instruments. The orange smoke is added to the gas. The wind direction is closely monitored and emergency services have been alerted to avoid spurious call-outs. The helicopter climbs to a height of 300 meters and the landing light is switched on to tell the control tower that it is directly above the release point. The ground-based photographer is ready. In the control room, the countdown continues. Shortly, the roof of the container will be raised. The wind speed is about two and a half meters per second. The direction is slightly off the axis of the master ray. The order to release is given. The time recorded by the computer. The gas cloud slumps to the ground very rapidly. It moves upwind until its leading edge is arrested by the wind. 
and spreads out sideways as a rapidly moving front, which soon reaches the white painted runway. Even after some time, the outward motion is still discernible. Here, the front edge has traveled several hundred meters from the release position. The cloud is very low-lying. The visible outline is no more than three or four meters thick, but gas sensors record the presence of gas above the visible outline. Slowly, the initial motion decays as the cloud spreads across the site the wind begins to pick up the cloud. The cloud continues to hang about the site for many minutes. Here is the helicopter view of the same experiment. The gas container with its black roof is to the left of the runway. The roof is raised and the container falls to the ground, releasing the gas. Much of the gas is rolled up into a donut shape. This is not easily seen from ground level, but is dramatically evident in the overhead views of all the experiments. Because of the shallow depth of the cloud, its visibility from above diminishes. Meanwhile, the computer is still busy recording data until the cloud passes the final row of instruments. An experiment can last up to half an hour, and during this time, the computer builds up a file with up to 10 million numbers representing the output voltage records at each sensor position. After the experiment is over, the computer then has to convert these numbers into engineering units such as velocity and concentration. The numbers are organized into time records for every sensor in the instrumented array. Okay, then, John, the scientists see. analyzing the results can select any sensor and produce a graph showing, for example, how the concentration varied with time at the specified position during the trial. The results are presented to a steering committee of scientists representing the international organizations who sponsored the trials. The findings are debated by the scientists and are used to refine the design of later trials in the series. The results of the trials will be published openly after completion of the program. The large collection of photographic and computer records represents the primary results of the trials to be further analyzed for comparison with mathematical models describing the behavior of heavy gas clouds. These experiments will play an important role in improving accuracy in assessing the hazards of accidents involving the release of flammable or toxic clouds.